Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring into the com video. We're going to be talking about AMD's Vega, and we're also going to be talking about the 490 lineup of graphics cards. Because some developments have happened over the past day or so, which shed light on the Vega lineup of uh, AMD's graphics cards, and we can also start doing some speculation on the 490 as well. So, you might have heard of Vega. It is, of course, touted to be the high end architecture for high-end gamers that's a stamp which AMD have put on their own GPU architecture roadmap which was recently revealed we already knew of course that it was uh, HBM2 and all of this stuff but they just added that little note recently just to remind us I guess which is fine fair enough but according to some informations found by a website known as 3d center they have found that there are actually a couple of different references to Vega in the Crimson software. Now, that doesn't really matter per se, you might think to yourself. You know, drivers sometimes are ahead of the curb. But the interesting part isn't necessarily that Vega is listed. It's that there are several variants of Vega. There's Vega 10, Vega 11, Greenland, and also Raven 1X. This means that AMD internally are probably working on a couple of versions of Vega, so we can start wondering what the hell they are. It's even stranger because Greenland was rumoured to just be another code name for Vega 10, but it is listed separately, which makes it a really bizarre situation. Now, it, we could assume it was some integrated graphics chip solution, but remember, Greenland originally appeared in a profile from an AMD employee. This was way back in the day. And it had 4096 shader processors. We've covered this a couple of times previously, which is an awful lot of uh, shader processors for some integrated chip. And AMD themselves say, well, rather, the individual who worked at AMD said, and I quote, as leading chip of the first graphics IP V9 generation. It has full capacity of 4096 shader processor along with the whole SOC V15 architecture." End quote. Now the interesting part is SOC, system on a chip, an IP V9 generation. So essentially AMD in their Crimson drivers split graphics cards into different generations. So, for example, you've got SI, which is Tahiti, CI, which is Milos, Kryptos, Hawaii, Nevis, and so on. V, VI, which is, and slash Graphics 8, which is Iceland, Tonga, Carrizo, Bermuda, Racer X, and Fiji. You might remember Fiji. And GFX81. Now, that is Polaris, because that is P Ellesmere. And I've got GPU-Z open right now. So, Graphics 9, GFX 9, is Greenland, Raven 1X, Vega 10, Vega 11. So, we have some questions answered regarding Vega. But we also have a crap ton more questions than what we do have answers. One of the most logical questions is what the frick... I had to control myself then is going on with the 490 and also what exactly are we going to be looking for with the Vega lineup is it going to be replacing the Furies so in short let's say for the sake of argument that you have the current generations of AMD's graphics cards where you had the 300 uh, that you know the, the 60s the 70s the 80s the 90s and then you had the Furies, right? We all know that. You had the Nano, you had the Fury X, and finally, you had the regular Fury card, which there were some differences between them. There was like clock speed differences or number of shaders enabled, all of that stuff. But essentially, one was using HBM, the other one was uh, not, and there was a clear elimination between those lines. So, is the same going to be said for Vega? So, for the sake of argument, we have the 480, possibly the 490, I'll get to that in a second, and then we have Vega as the next Fury, so for example it'll be like Fury 2, or is it going to be that AMD are going to release up to, let's say Polaris, um, let's say they're going to release another Polaris 
based graphics card on the 490 I'll get to that in a second and therefore Vega is going to be the RX 5XX and perhaps we're going to see Polaris based GPUs rebadged as 500 for the low end so for example the Polaris 10 which is currently the 480 will be rebadged as let's say for the sake of argument the 460 or maybe the 470 and go from there or are we going to see an amalgamation of those now I did mention there were some questions regarding the 490 this has happened several times over and I didn't want to keep rehashing this but it's a good time to talk about it now we've seen AMD inadvertently confirm and I say that in the loosest possible quotations in the history of mankind the existence of 490 because it was on one of their websites for a short time on the AMD for you where you could redeem codes Sapphire had it on their help section but you could put that down to a typo but there's an awful lot of inconvenient typos going around and they've rectified it and it's a bit weird so we're left with multiple different possibilities of what the 490 could be and I'm not saying any of these are likely I'm not saying that they are I'm just saying these are possibilities the first possibility is it's two Polaris 10s on the, the same PCB now this could be done in a couple of different ways it could be done the traditional way which is basically two GPUs separate with their own memory um, their own memory allotment and it basically works like the the uh, Fury the Fury Pro Duo or what have you and Bob's your uncle so basically games will work in crossfire and it relies on software the game in other words and whatever else to cooperate for that game to run the second option is it will be more hardware based so it will be almost like and I don't want to use the word sock but let's just assume it's a sock just for the sake of ease of explaining it um, and the two GPUs will be essentially side by side and there might be some hardware controller in between them which basically designates the tasks between them that's a possibility although it's an awful lot of engineering I'm not saying it couldn't be done it's a possibility but God knows if that would actually be the case the second or I'm sorry that would be the third I can't count apparently the third option is it's either a variant of Vega 10, Vega 11, or Greenland, which is the 490. Because, once again, just to clarify, we know Polaris 10, that the Polaris 10 that we've got available right now, you can mosey on down to your store, pick up an RX 480. That is the highest configuration of Polaris 10 available. There is no separate, you know, compute units which are unlocked you can't adjust the die it's done that that's it so yields are not going to affect this the only way that yields will affect it is perhaps if they wanted to start making rx4 i don't know 75 or whatever i'm just exact using exaggeration here in other words the maximum potential of those chips is already done similarly yields and all of the luck in the world in terms of cherry picking in, uh, the best quality it's not going to be enough even if they add let's say 150 megahertz to the rx480 hell let's be really generous and say 200 megahertz with the world's best cooling liquid cooling hell it could be the tears of your enemies that are cooling the damn card it doesn't matter let's say you've got 200 megahertz it's not going to be that much extra performance for them to then call that card the 490 it just doesn't make sense so therefore if the 490 really does exist it has to either be a dual card or it has to be some variant of either greenland or vega 10 or vega 11. then again all of this does rely on one theory and that theory is that the 490s are going to come out this year which it's not a guarantee they might have just leaked it put it up early and feel oh oops didn't mean to do that the only reason that we might think it's going to come out this year is that amd 4 u offer assuming it wasn't a really major screw up on the webmaster whoever was in charge of putting that up redeeming of the codes was the end of this year so when one could speculate if you go down that logical hallway that the 490 must be out some point this year but 
it might not be it could just be a complete screw up now what we do know um, and this is well established because of multiple press releases is that Hinux SK Hinux are putting out HBM2 parts chips if you will by the third quarter now this is really important because we know that those chips are going to be utilized most likely in the high-end Vega part and they can go to multiple different stacks 4 high, 8 high, whatever um, and they operate at 256 gigabyte per stack so there is by the way a slightly slower variant which is 204 gigabytes per second which both of those just to clarify is released the third quarter we don't know when the third quarter is uh, so when in the third quarter but we know the third quarter of 2016 so what this means is that it's possible that Vega is basically waiting on those chips for then for AMD to do a lot of testing with a good amount of yields and then for them to essentially start testing them uh, in bulk figuring out what clock speeds they can get manufacture the damn things and then obviously once they've got a good surplus start um, sending them out well obviously not AMD themselves they'd have to start sending out the particular parts to the AIBs and they would start producing the card and so on it's like a conveyor belt system but my point being AMD have already taped out Vega we know that because they've confirmed it um, you know they, they reached a milestone Raja Khodori actually uh, congratulated his team just recently so what that all means is that essentially most of the engineering work the actual legwork is done they're probably just waiting for the pieces to fall into place so with assuming that is high bandwidth memory too we can assume that theoretically Vega won't be let's say August 2017 it might be fairly early in 2017 the last thing that's also really weird is there have been some rumors concerning GP102 so GP102 is the Titan variant. So Pascal, as you're probably aware, is GP100, is Titan, and that has HBM2. But there are some conflicting rumors. Now, the website which supposedly received a Titan um, sample, if you will, had said that there was going to be two versions of the card. One is going to have 16 gigabytes, one's going to have 12, but other rumors are saying that the GP102 is actually not going to have that. It's going to have GDDR5X, which I'm not particularly inclined to believe, but it's possible. Regardless, it's possible that we're going to see one Vega variant designed with HBM2 in mind, and one Ve Vega variant based upon GDDR5X. Now remember, just because it's Vega doesn't mean all of the cards in the Vega lineup have to be HBM2. As you go down the performance stack, you don't need high bandwidth memory 2 to feed the beast. Because if you've got a card, let's say for argument's sake, that's got 2,000 shaders, it doesn't put out enough performance to put out, uh, sorry, to require HBM2. Now, I know arguably you could just reduce the amount of, um, of chips on there. And you could still get, let's say, 4 or 8 gigabytes on there if you were just to stack a couple of HBM2 chips. But is it going to be worth it compared to the pricing of GDDR5X? Well, that's for AMD to decide. It's a very curious state of affairs. Hmm. It's possible Vega 10, Vega 11 will use GDDR5X. And it still leaves us with the really weird question of what the hell is Greenland? Yeah, well... I don't feel I answered any questions in this video, but I certainly brought up some questions, didn't I? Yeah. Anyway, uh, feel free to click the link in the video description, which will take you to the 3D Center website, so you can check out their thread. It's quite interesting. Anyway, take care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.